if we're having a group discussion somehow, or we're having taking too long. Has someone moved my thing again? If we're taking a long time, I'll pause it so that everything is not on there. In the beginning, I'm not as good as pausing, but I get better as we go. All right, so let's go through your your prompts here. Um, how is the sample related to a population? How is the sample related to a population? It's a small part of it. It's a small part of it. It, it has to have the same characteristics from the whole population. And hopefully when we do that, we get a good representation. It's a subset. Very good. The difference between a parameter and a statistic? Parameter is for which group? Population. And statistic is for? Sample. A statistic is a numerical value that describes a population characteristic. Characteristic. Well, it describes a sample. Or you could change this one and say a parameter describes the population. Whichever way you decide to do it. It is impossible for the Census Bureau to obtain all the census data about the population of the United States. The census takes like every 10 years, it gathers information. You probably don't remember because it was so quite a few years ago when the census came out again, and you get these little packets to your house. And I'm sure your parents didn't bug you with it because you were just young, probably 12, 13, maybe probably less, because it was six years ago. Um, so, six, seven years ago, probably. Um, but what it does is it pretty much asks the people in your household. It used to be able to ask income. I don't think it can ask income anymore. It asks the school districts. It asks certain things, school age kids and whatnot. And from that, they gather everybody's information. If you don't respond to that packet in a certain amount of time, they call you. They say, you know, by the way, you have to fill that packet. If you still don't respond to it, somebody will usually come to your house and knock on the door and say, um, we haven't received your packet, because they want all your information. Does it still mean that you're going to answer your door and give them your information? No, a lot of people are at home, they work, people come during working hours, and people work. And some of my statistics kids at the time were helping with the census taking, like they would go to different houses and get a list of places you need to go to, and if you're 18, you're able to do that. So you can go and knock on people's doors and just say, you know, by the way, could you fill this out? We have extra ones, and they're, they're not difficult forms to fill out, but they are a little bit time-consuming, and a lot of people always feel like I'm not giving my information to somebody else, you know, so they don't fill it out. But over the years, they found that this process of collecting all this information, it takes them a few years, probably more, to process everything by the time all this comes back and they take care of it. With new technology, I'm sure things are a lot faster, and if they do them electronically by voting districts or school districts, it will probably get there a little faster, and they can write programs and compile them. But they found now the next census should probably only take samples of places. They're supposedly going to do, like, certain areas and exhaust that area, and do another area and exhaust that, and get enough areas throughout the country and take that information. But they do use it, farmers use it, um, how many people do I need to supply for, uh, voting, registration, school districts you use it, do I have enough schools to handle all the kids that are coming in? Because at the time, a school district, once you move into an area, doesn't know you have small children. So sometimes with the census, it'll say, well, they've got two-year-olds, three-year-olds, they're going to be five in another couple of years. So you need to get your schools ready. So it, it is good, valuable information. Unfortunately, it's very hard to take that amount of information. A population is a collection of some outcomes, responses, measurements, all. Population is everybody. All encompassing. Stop me if you have any questions. Okay, describe whether these are populations or samples. The revenue of each of the 30 companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average population, in each, we use all the whole Dow Jones Industrial Average population here. A survey of 500 spectators from a stadium with 
42,000 spectators. Sample. We're good. The cholesterol level levels of 20 patients in a hospital with 100 patients. Sample. Final score of each golfer in the tournament. Population. Good. The political party of every U.S. president. Population. This is a Venn diagram. Venn diagrams are kind of like fading out, but I like Venn diagrams. This whole box represents your population. This little piece right here represents just a portion of your population. So it's kind of nice. Your population is the parties of the registered voters in Warren County, this whole box. And your sample is the subset of this. Is the parties of Warren County who responded to the online survey. This is your sample. This is your box. If you remember doing these, that everything had to add up to your, your total. Sometimes we put the total outside of here. Some, some teachers put the totals outside. Some te teachers put whoever wasn't in here, put that total out here. Like in other words, if this is 50 people in the whole thing and this is 30, they put 20 out here inside this box out here. Different ways of doing a Venn diagram, but it's kind of nice because it gives you population versus sample. Again, here's another one. Population is the big box. Ages of adults in the United States who own cell phones, and the sample is the little box. Ages of adults in the United States who own Samsung cell phones, a subset of your cell phone. We're good so far? Okay, not difficult, but we use populations and samples throughout this entire course. So it's important that you stay on track with the populations and the samples. A survey of 1,015 U.S. adults found that 32% have had to put off medical care for themselves or their family in the past year due to the cost. So this is the number you're starting with. Are there more than that many U.S. adults in the United States? Mm -hmm. So this is a sample. The collection of the, 150, the 1,015 U.S. adults that they surveyed. The population comes from all U.S. adults in the United States. This is the information that comes from here. Because it's related to a sample, is this a statistic or a parameter? A statistic. A survey of 12,082 U.S. adults found that 45.5% received an influenza vaccine. Blah, blah, blah. Are there more adults? Yep. Okay. And this is your statistic. A survey of 55 U.S. law firms found that the average hourly billing rate was 425. This is your sample, 55, from all law firms that bill, and that was your statistic. A survey, again, of 202 pilots, they're just asking you, you can kind of see a pattern here. Find me the sample, find me the population. And then this is the piece of information that they give you. So if it's based on a sample, it's a statistic. Based on the population, it's a parameter. I know they didn't ask you that part, but I like to like add that in. Um, to gather information about starting companies, a researcher contacted 65 of the 500 companies. So therefore, your population is 500 companies. Okay. They kind of told you where it came from. Determine if it's a parameter or a statistic. Just make sure you know if it's a sample or a population. The average annual salary for 35 of the 1,200 accountants, so this is a sample. So this information right here, the average salary is a statistic. 62 of the 97 passengers aboard the Hindenburg ship survived this explosion. This is your population, 97. How many wrote sample? Yeah. Okay. So this is a tricky one. 
The 62 of the 97, this is the information about it. So 62 out of 97 people, this is called the parameter. That's what's being said about it. But it's based on the population of all the people in the, in the shed. This was a little trickier because of this. Oh, and that was it, right? and we're going to be talking about what kind of data they, they come across. And data has a certain order to it. It goes from like a lowest level data to the highest level data. So we're going to talk about that in, in, in here. We're also going to talk about qualitative versus quantitative. Now without knowing these definitions, this looks like what we're... Quality. Quality. This looks like what word? Quantity. Quantity. So which of those two deal with numbers? Quantity. So anytime we have quantitative, quantitative data, this has some kind of a measurement in here. A, a numerical measurement. Qualitative data will be like um, better, worse. There's some kind of a difference, some kind of measurement but it can't exactly put a number on it. Um, Mid-sized cars, SUVs, they have some kind of difference between them, but it can't exactly say, oh, the size is a thousand pounds different. I, I don't have a way of measuring that. So some of these you can pick up right from just looking at that. Again, qualitative deals with um, things that you can't exactly measure. The number on your um, baseball shirt, the number on your soccer shirt, if my number says 12, does that mean I'm better than the 12 people before me? Mm -hmm. No, it may, means no, nothing in terms of my, of my number. It just might be my favorite number. So I pick 12. That's qualitative. It tells something about me, but it doesn't give me something to measure. Um, names of cities. This is Newburgh. Newburgh is a label for this city. It's a qualitative measurement, a qualitative data. It doesn't measure anything. It doesn't say that Newburgh is bigger than New Winter in name alone. So I'd have to say, count my population. My population, on the other hand, tells me my population could be, um, let's just say, 20,000 for Newburgh, and maybe 10,000 for New Winter. And I, now I know Newburgh is larger by looking at the population, but I knew nothing by looking at the name. Population would be my quantitative data. That's something I can compare. Names, places, colors, types of cars, they're all qualitative. A quantitative, again, has the word quantity in it. How many in here? Something that I can put my finger on and actually say there is a difference. Not, not a, a real fine part right here. It's just the upper level part right here. So we look to see we have a model and we have a suggested price. Of those two categories, model and suggested price, which one is qualitative? Model. Therefore, quantitative is your suggested price. This I can measure. I can say this one's more expensive than this one. This one's more expensive than this one. This one's more expensive than that one. I can actually measure. If I look at the names, they're just names placed to those cards. Nothing too tricky. Again, city and population, which is my qualitative city. And my quantitative data is population. Something I can measure, something I can put my finger on. Yeah. Here's the tricky part. We have four levels of measurement. From lowest to highest, they go nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. I put this on your note sheet. Make sure you understand these. This is really important. Nominal data is quantitative, qualitative only. Has no nothing to do with what I can count, what I can figure out who's bigger than the other. There's my label. 
nominal. Nominal almost sounds like the word name, doesn't it? Nominal name. It's just the name of something. The number on your jersey. My name. Your name. The name of your book. Not how many pages are in it, just the name. Zip code. Phone number. Phone number. One phone number to the next doesn't mean anything. It's just a label for that phone number. So anything that's just as qualitative only, just a label, like a name, would be nominal. Ordinal can be either qualitative or quantitative. Most of the time you're going to see it as qualitative. If there's some kind of arrangement here, usually like a lowest to a highest. Um, if I say like the list of cards, if I say I have a, I don't really know, a subcompact, and then a compact, and then a midsize, and then an SUV, and a truck. Does this have some kind of order to it? Some kind, right? So it's the smallest to large, right? But can I actually see where the difference is in them? I just know that I gave them some kind of order. Um, sometimes you take a survey, and did you ever see where it says pick like one through five or one through ten, one being the worst, ten being the best, but then I have a somewhat the best and somewhat the worst and the highly disagree and sometimes disagree. All of those are are ordinal measurements because there's some difference between them, but I can't put my finger on it. And those kind of categories are very, very hard for you to tabulate because even though you may give somebody um, like work, uh, like what do they used to say? Somewhat like likely, somewhat likely, unlikely, highly unlikely. To me, if it's unlikely, it's just unlikely. Highly unlikely, unlikely is just like, okay, it's still unlikely. So when you tabulate those kind of things yourself, it's going to be difficult. My unlikely could be very different than your highly unlikely. Same thing, have you ever gone to the hospital with an injury and they say, tell me your pain level? And they say, from 1 to 10, what is your pain level? Well, the reason I'm here is because it hurts like heck. I got a 10 pain level. They say, come on, it's not a 10. But you have nothing else to gauge from. It hurts like heck. It's never hurt this bad before. I obviously broke my leg. It hurts like hell. So it's got to be a 10. So, but to someone else, it's like, yeah, I think I broke my leg. It hurts a little when I step on it. I'll say five. It depends. So it's very hard to say, give me a number for this qualitative order. Just let me go through these. We'll go through these again Monday, guys. Just give me one more minute. Um, here's where we get into your measurements of things. Interval, and the easiest way to remember this is time and temperature. Temperature. I can say today is 85 degrees. Tomorrow is 90 degrees. Which one's warmer? 90 by 5 degrees, right? Is it twice as hot tomorrow? I can't say that, but I can say that there is a difference between them. But I can't say that we'll it's twice as hot tomorrow. Even if I say 50 versus 90, I still can't say twice as hot. Um, we'll talk about these again. And ratio is your highest. The highest level meaning I can find a difference. I can say um, I have twice as much money as you. You have, uh, I have half as much of, the, of your apples that, that you have. I can actually make a ratio out of this. We're going to work more with this on Monday. These are really, really important. Again, if you have any trouble with that photo, let me know, okay?